Hey everybody, Helena here. Kelly here. We are Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors and coaches to build a business on your terms. And um, we're just off the back of running our Speaker Insight retreat, which is always a real treat for the two of us. And uh, my goodness me, Haroon, you are just like sat there on it and just <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome. So we're going to do the thing that we always do, which is talk about the buzz in our business whilst we're waiting for people, unlike Haroon, who <laughs> is just obviously us. sat there waiting with a cup of tea in hand. Sarah's there too. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. So, so um, we're going to start with a little bit of buzz in our business. And of course, as usual, for those of you that know the drill, we would love to know the buzz in your business. What's interesting, exciting, happening, happen? that you want to celebrate with us or share with us that is coming up that is really magic in your business. Uh, for us, I just got back off holiday. Look at the tan. I know, a little bit healthy. Um, Kelly had a week from hell. Oh, well, a week from hell in a from good an way. introvert's point of view. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's so true. I was uh, running a spotlight event for my speakers and people want to do showreels on Tuesday. I was speaking at the PSA conference on Thursday and then we were running our retreat Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So I'm pretty much peopled out. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a shout out if you were at any one of those events in the comments. Let us know if you're in we'd the We'd love to know and what you, what you learned because we love a little bit of what you learned because that's <laughs> always a good thing for other people to hear what you learned second hand as such because it actually really helps them learn. Um, so uh, the, the, the retreat <laughs> actually was so much fun i don't think i've laughed that much during a training ever i've never had so much of a stomach workout i know right i mean before. truly it was like mini crunches pretty <laughs> much every half hour so uh so kudos and we to, did get a lot of stuff done right? i was just gonna say kudos <laughs> to the six people who are now got up and running businesses and just enjoying the whole thing which was just amazing and it really is just such a treat for us to run the retreat because we know that we are building or helping to build change-making businesses out in the world. And that's really why we set up Speaker Insight in the first place. So if you are a little bit lost and stuck and you kind of go, oh, I'd like me some of that, 4th of October to the 6th of October is the next one. I'm sure Kelly's doing all the, here's a link to this, here's a link to that. Of course I am, as always. Which includes those people who are in the Connection Hub, brilliant and welcome for those of you who are not that's actually where we don't just broadcast trainings like this we actually have a whole bunch of people about we're coming up to 4,500 or so um, speakers authors and coaches who are just all wanting connections asking questions having conversations sharing opportunities all sorts of things go on in there so please do come and join us in there because that's actually the place to really be if you want to get your business moving and oh and we've got one other thing coming up after Kelly gets back from her holiday. Because I need a revamp. <laughs> she really, truly really does. She deserves it. It's fine. You're stuck with me for one of the weeks leading up to that holiday. But uh, on the 17th of July is our next Connect and Create Day. So at a Connect and Create Day, we that, that's where we invite people from the Connection Hub to actually not just be in the virtual world together, but actually be in person and connect to each other. And some magic always happens on those days. Um, it is a chance to not only share your pitch and uh, see who else is in the room, develop relationships, get to know people better, start collaborations, all of these things have happened in in the past um, but it's actually a place where you get stuff done and you get feedback from one or other of us uh, on the thing that you're working on so it's a come and do something day that actually furthers your business come and work on your business not in it with us and we put the tickets up live yesterday and we're already half full yeah <laughs> so please do not hesitate on yeah. booking your tickets on the link below no hesitation is needed <laughs> now uh, so I reckon I've rambled for long enough I reckon we can probably get straight into this and uh, one of the key questions that we ask at the retreat and we thought we may as well do a Facebook live on this because it's really important how you are feeling about your business is a real temperature gauge on what you might need to do in it to help you understand where you might be stuck in it where you might be striving where you might be actually surviving or actually thriving in some way your feelings are a really great barometer or test for what's actually happening in your business and there's usually an answer depending on the feelings so we know that there are kind of four core uh, emotional states that go along with running a business. So that's what we're going to share with you. One is complete breakdown. Yes, I'm that's joking. right. 
that's the step before, honey. <laughs> Oh, honestly, where'd you get the staff, I tell you? Um, but, but it's actually a great question to ask yourself, this question of how am I feeling about my business? And, and so some of that is really about building a business on your terms. And the reason why you need to ask it on a regular basis is because you change as well as your business changing, as well as the industry trend, trends changing. And that means that business on your terms might need to have a look-see around it and just change it. In fact, for those of you who um, who listened to the interview I did, amazing, about the flow in your business with Nick. with Nick Haynes, you know, actually the way that his household is now set up is different. So he's changing the business model to suit that. and. And that's what we're talking about. When you get a feeling, one of these four feelings that we're gonna talk you through, you'll know that something needs doing in your business. And it may well be that it's nothing that's going wrong, it's just that you need to change how you're feeling about your business and you can do certain things around that. So, we always talk about, or I certainly always talk about, there is, and this is such an important concept for everybody, and for some of you this might be entirely new, for those of you that are fairly new to us. So, I'm gonna go through it and say, there is you. So as a speaker, author, or a coach, there is you and there is your business. And a lot of the time, you are your business, but we don't want you to think about it like that because there is you and there is your business and you are two different entities. And here's the thing, you serve your business and your business serves you. And that's really important to know because there are things you can do in the business and there are things you can do inside of you that allows you to have the synergy that you are partners with your business. I really hope that's landing for all of you. And for some of you, it may be the first time you hear that and that might actually make you go, oh, huh. So I don't need to take my business personally. Mm. I don't need to take the rejection personally. I don't need to take the fact that actually the business marketed itself in one way and then, oh, nothing happened. Huh, then we just need to do something different because it serves you. But you don't have to take that personally. It was simply a tactic that we did inside the business that didn't quite work so we can tweak it. So, and we normally find that so many speakers, authors and coaches are constantly serving their business. Yeah but their business isn't always serving them from a financial or a time point of view. Tia, happy birthday, but what the heck are you doing on I know, Facebook right? Live on your birthday? Get off and you enjoy some cake. Happy birthday to you, <laughs> happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to so, you. So one of the things that we want to talk about is the language, yes. right? So uh, I used to uh, do some marketing for one of the third largest coaching companies in the world called Sherlaws, and their whole coaching model is built nice. around the language. So they can listen to a conversation with you or you can do their stages model or whatever it might be where they will actually be able to just take the language that you use when you're describing your business yep. and they'll be able to tell you how many staff you have, what's your turnover, how long you've been in business, just from the words that you're describing. And that's what we've really been picking up really over the last couple of years that we've been working with Speaker Insight mm. is because we can really spot the language that you're using as a speaker, author or coach and we're going, okay, we know that's where That's the at. stage where they're at. And, and, but the great thing about that is, is, is some of you always think we're a little bit spooky about how we can actually kind of be in there. The language, the feeling that you have around your business usually allows us to understand how we can best help you and where to direct you. And I always talk about, you know, when I welcome people in, I always talk about, well, how can we signpost you? The signposting happens as a result of the feeling. Of the language. Yeah. So, so while we're going through these four key emotions, just have a sense check with yourself of where you're currently feeling for yourself. Yeah. You might be in between two and that's, that's fine because that means you're making progress. Yeah. But also it's good to see to identify because we are going to help you, as always, always, once you've identified your emotion, help you get to the next level. Because yeah. in our opinion, these four key emotions are linked to the four stages of running a business as a speaker, author or coach. Mm. That's got you all got your Intrigue, pens out. open loop. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the first okay. one? So let's get some pens and paper down just so you can start thinking, yes, is this me or not? The first stage that we hear. Oh, wait. I've got this far and I didn't say oh, it. Hashtag replay. replay. <laughs> <laughs> so please tell us if you're on hashtag replay, even if it's weeks and weeks and weeks later, we do like to know because it just allows us to ensure that you know you can ask your questions and we'll still answer it. Yeah, so, you can always sorry, have to join us now for you can go. afternoon coffee. Sorry about that. Okay, so the first one is when people say to us, 
I'm really struggling. Okay, this is the first key emotion I want you to really feel into. This is when people often feel like they've got one foot in one side of their business and one foot in the other. Mm. So it could be the fact that you're having a full-time job at the moment and you're deciding to start to write a book or you're thinking about actually branching out and becoming a coach or becoming a speaker. Mm. So with this, sometimes you feel like from a commitment point of view, you're wearing multiple hats and actually nothing's really making much progress mm. because you've got commitments and time and stuff that's pulling you here when you really want to be here. So. One of the things around feeling struggling is, is that commitment side of things. You might also be thinking, and we all feel this a lot of the time. Yeah, we do. Am I good enough? Right? So this is where the imposter syndrome obviously comes to play. Now, normally, every time Helena says new level, new devil, mm -hmm. and every time you roll up to a new level, you'll have a little bit of imposter <clears throat> syndrome. Yeah. But some people at this struggling stage of imposter syndrome don't actually take the leap to make anything solid, to yeah. actually start doing any foundations because they've still got that one foot in the other camp. So this is the time where they're like, <laughs> she's got her pen in her mouth and yeah. in her hand. <laughs> Good. So, so this is where for you, you're thinking, oh, I'm really struggling because I really want to do this, but am I good enough? I really want to do this, but have I got the time? Yeah. I really want to do this, but do I have the team and the resources around you? Yeah. So you feel like you're at this, if you look at your career pathway as a speaker, author, mm -hmm. or coach as a hill, yeah. this is the hardest stage because you're at the bottom yeah. with this massive rock and you're having to start to get the momentum to push it up there. Yeah. And we all know that this first stage is the hardest. It okay? really is. So you also, when people have got this idea that they're like, I'm really fed up of doing a job, I can do it better, I'm going to jump ship and do it. Mm -hmm. This is where people sometimes have that realisation and when they start doing it, it's hard. And they go, shouldn't it be easier than this? It was actually easier, even though I wasn't feeling so self-fulfilled in my job, it was easier. Yeah. I wasn't responsible for everything. I didn't realise that I was going to have to manage the marketing, the accounting, the sales, the Suddenly there's this delivery. whole new raft of things that you might have to learn, a whole new thing that actually lets you go, oh, I thought my idea was good, but now that I'm checking, I'm like doubting it. And then I'm rallying and I'm doubting it. And I'm rallying it and I'm doubting it. And so that kind of context of feeling stressed because you're just not quite sure where everything fits contributes to the struggling yeah. feeling. And so, so one of the things we want to think about with that is actually about, are you really clear as well mm. on your plan, on your business model? Because sometimes when you've got this idea, yeah. a load of people go, I just want to speak and I lo love it when I rock up and speak. But I didn't realise that I had to do all this stuff behind being the a scenes, speaker. The that's right. Okay? So this is where we want you to be really clear on your business model. Mm -hmm. We want you to be really clear on your revenue streams. We want you to be really clear on your marketing strategy. Yeah. So, and we've got loads of lies and all of those things. Yeah. But we want you to go, be really clear with yourself. Is this the right time? Yeah. Because at the moment, if you look at your time commitments and you look at realistically what you're expected to do to make this your business, have you got the capacity? Have you got the resources? Have you got the finance? Have you got the team around you? Have you got the skills? And have you got the confidence? Because a lot of you will actually just, because of this doubt and the imposter syndrome, you might actually also just be really, really caught in, but there are so many other people out there doing it. Mm -hmm. And or you might actually be going, I am furious that so many people are not doing this subject justice in some way. But then you get slapped by all of this other stuff that Kelly just spoke about. And, and the last thing I want you to consider, and a lot of people don't really look at this until they step into the role of, I'm going to call it an expert, yeah. is that your level of visibility needs to go sky high. And that's where the confidence comes in. Right, it's where the imposter syndrome, the confidence, all this stuff. Because if you want to be found and you want people to work with you, you need to show up, yeah. right? And believe me, I think most people in the hub know this about me, yeah. that I hadn't done a Facebook Live till the first one, which is our awful welcome video in the collection <laughs> hub, which we really do need to we, update we, and change. It's on the list for us to update. It's one day I'll. Yeah. But, so those things of me actually having to go, you're not a behind the scenes girl anymore. You're going to have to show up at least once a week and have to do these things on stage and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And that was a big test for me to go, have I got what it takes? Yeah. I know I've got, I'm going to do it, I can do it, but do I really enjoy doing it? Mm -hmm. Is it something that a muscle that I can build and learn? And, you know, how many months have been going now, 16, 18 months? You know, I still don't love this, 
But I love the interaction. I love the fact that, yeah. you know, we're helping you. And that's what feeds my soul in that respect. It's the service part of it for both of us. But you've got to think, am I ready to be visible? Yeah. Which not only means, yes, help people, but it also means you're going to get trolled. Yeah. It also means you're going to get people that are actually going to cut you down. I've had a couple of posts in the Connection Hub in the last mm. week about people saying, I put this out there, I've got great intentions, but people are slamming me down, yeah. right? And that's the point if you're going to be a thought leader or a change agent. You need to be resilient. And you're going to disrupt. Yeah. So not everyone's going to love you. And that's something you need to ask yourself. Am I ready? Have I got the time commitments? Have I got the resources? Am I strong enough connected to my why and my purpose to rise above all of my own limiting beliefs and what else I might need to get out of my own way? And are you willingness to show up? Yeah, completely. And some of that for some of you, and, and I love that the Connection Hub is the space that it is, is have I got the support mm. from people who don't think I've got three heads so that I have got somewhere where I can come and say, it didn't work the way I wanted it to and what have I done wrong? Because the chances are you didn't do anything wrong. It's just you didn't give it the time, the trust, the patience, the, 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 the energy you know, that you're taking on from somebody else. Actually, you did everything right. It's just the world hasn't caught up with you yet. And as speakers, authors, and coaches, that's what you're doing. You are set to go and make change in the world. And that can sometimes be a bit Titanic-like. You know, you turn the wheel. Is it a wheel? I don't know. It's one of those things. It's a ship's thing. Anyway, I don't know. It's somebody cool. somebody <laughs> type it in. Like, we, we don't know what one of those is. Anyway, you know what we're talking about. Popeye-like. Um, it's a wheel. Anyway, anyway, so the, the point about it is, is, you know, you turn in a direction and it takes a long time for the tanker to actually kind of move. And sometimes that's how it is when we're changing minds and hearts. And for most speakers, authors and coaches, a ship's, what ship's is it? Wheel. A ship's wheel. I'll go with <laughs> Thanks, that. Sarah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for the confirmation. Um, and and, and it, it can actually take a long time. So your job is to stand steady with that. But that struggling feeling is this mass of things, as Kelly's saying, that usually you need to kind of do a lot more than you thought you were gonna do. And so have you got what it takes is really the question. So if you're feeling struggle, if you're feeling like you're struggling, just do that sense check. Just do a sense check on your clarity of have you got what it takes from the time, energy, resources? Mm. Are you willing to show up and be visible and be out there? And also, do you have a clear strategy plan of how you're going to make money from this, how you're going to show up, how you're going to productize, how you're going to market it? And if you haven't, then 4th to the 6th of October, honestly. <laughs> I'm, 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 I, I'm just, I was just rereading some of the feedbacks and I was like, yeah, sure, actually, actually yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. So I'm going to take you on to the second sort of piece. So, so part of what, you know, struggling might not be a word that you identify with. So other words for that could be you're finding yourself stressed, rebellious, aggressive. You feel like it's a battle. You're wrestling with things. There's a striving or a trying. It's straining. It's like exhausting in some way. These are all the kind Sounds of words like that are in week. there. I, I was just going to say, and there's your intro introverts nightmare so we'll we'll make sure we don't schedule something like that and some of this is just testing things out and going hmm, not too not too much of that never do that don't again do five right? days of people in a row because you are in charge and and that's the other piece I really want to ensure that you actually know you are in charge and so that's why we're doing this emotional context if you find that you're struggling you go okay what can I change and that's the that's the key question we want you to get to so the second core set of emotions, and of course there are some different definitions under it that I'll give you in a moment, is, is this whole, it's under the tab of frustrated. It's really this whole sense of you've committed, we talk, just talked about that, but now you might be at the stage where you're busy being busy and you've got so much going on. You've committed, you're sharing what you know, you're getting your expertise out there, and, and yet sometimes, so uh, the frustration comes from a, a few different kind of places. Sometimes it's around the whole, actually you're putting things out there, but people still don't seem to understand, don't fully understand what you're about, how you're, what you're actually up to in the world. And they don't actually get that you're here waiting to show them how you can make life better, but they're not getting it. And that can be really, really frustrating. Uh, or you're managing to communicate it, but they're not taking you up on it. And that can be really frustrating as well because they don't quite seem to know 
why or how you can help them. So or that's, what to do next. Exactly. And that's all around either your positioning or your marketing or just not knowing your avatar well enough to meet them where they're at. So for those of you that did our avatar challenge, uh, Last week? Last week, week before? week before, something like that. <laughs> um, you know, you'll, you'll know that we talk about getting to know your avatar so well because if you're frustrated, the chances are that you've got a good heart, you've got a good message, you might even have a good business model, it's just you're not communicating it well enough. Um, the other thing is that it could well be that you're, you've got those bits nailed, but the capacity that you have, you're now at full. You're, you're at the point where you go, hang on a minute, I can't serve any more people. People want what I've got, but I can't serve anymore. And that's usually because your model now needs to change. So mm -hmm. you might have been, been doing a lot of one-to-one -one stuff. You might have been going in and doing a lot of days, but you're not actually leveraging the impetus that you actually have in your business. So that might be that you're starting to think about either increasing your prices, or, but that's where some of that kind of uh, imposter syndrome might come in. So you feel a bit frustrated by that. It's like, hang on a minute, I'm going out and serving all these people and there are more to serve and there are more people that want it, but I don't have the capacity. Or it might be changing your business model to train other people up to actually do it. Or it might be starting to look at online courses, group programs, things that you can do that leverage the juiciness that you've got in the business. So if you find yourself being busy, being busy, mm -hmm. that's really that's the piece that you need to start looking at the business model and because what you'll find is that you've probably created a job for yourself. <laughs> and who wants that? That's probably not why you got into this. It's a job you love. A job that's not paying you very much. I either, know, right? right? And the thing about that is, is, is that really the thing to do at this level is you start to learn to actually pull back and only do the things you love by learning to outsource. outsource. By learning to actually give the stuff that you don't need to be doing, the stuff that's repeatable. Sorry, just for Andrea. This is the stage that you need to work with others she's others. just debating whether she's struggling or frustrated and i think she, with that line she knows she's frustrated yeah that's exactly just it for you, Andrew. so 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 the key here is frustrated usually means if i gave you a person who could come in and do fill in your own blank you would probably go oh thank goodness and for most of you that's a tech VA. Yeah. Who does all of your administration, all of your social media, all of your scheduling, all of your invoice following up, all of your Notice media your creations. Feeling as she's saying these. People are like, where do I find one of them? Yeah, <laughs> I want one. In the connection hub. Yes, just put a little call out for one and, and that'll happen. It's also, the flip side of that is, because you're now wearing all these hats and you've gotten used to the fact that you need to, there is marketing in your business, there is financial commitments and things that you need to do. There is operational stuff that needs to be written or done or completed in some way. There is the whole sales cycle that actually is needed. You need to start looking at how am I using my time? Am I energy batching? Am I actually being wise about where I spend my time? How often Who I'm working? I where am with? I with? All of those things are the things that actually allow you to go, hang on a minute, am I leveraging beautifully? So outsourcing and actually beginning to leverage by creating courses, group programs, modifying the model, that's what will help you get out of frustration. Increasing your capacity. Completely. Knowing your avatar yeah. and working with others. That's it. Now, some of the words that you might actually, the alternatives to frustrated, if you find yourself thinking, oh, this is bad, you know, this is how I'm doing. Unfulfilled, irritated, unsatisfied, angry. Angry is always really a good pointer for this one. Upset, exasperated, discouraged, annoyed, bothered, blocked, obstructed, unsuccessful, just oh, why is nothing working? Like foiled, vexed, hindered. You, you, you get this whole kind of uh, tension based thing. That's usually a sign that it's time to outsource and leverage. Okay. Let's get to some happier emotions. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. Yeah, when does my business get better? And by the way, you can dip into these. Yeah. New level. You'll new go, devil. You might go right down to struggling again if you start a new area of your business, if you start going international, if you start... Yeah, or if you do what I've just told you, which is group or leverage or online, then suddenly you're back down oh here. Oh my God, I have but... to create online courses. I don't know where to start. Ah. I don't know who to do. Right. Yeah. So the next stage is when you feel happy, okay? <laughs> 
So this is actually, if you know your ideal client, so everyone has their avatar, and I think this was a distinction that was made at the retreat this weekend, yeah. is that you have your avatar, which is the people that you would like, you want to work with, they, you can support and you can help them. But then you also have your ideal avatar, mm -hmm. which is actually the top 20% of the people that you work with. Yeah. And these are the people that you absolutely love, you'll have around for dinner, they're the same, you know, they're just you, but just in a different body. Yeah. And so actually, the people that we love to work with our ideal clients are normally in the happy stage, right? And again, from an emotional point of view, I know Helena's doing lots of words, so happy might not be thing. Mm -hmm. You might say, I'm really content with my business. Yeah. I'm really grateful for how my business is running at the moment. Yeah. I'm really delighted, I'm happy, I'm cheered. I'm, you know, you're just that fortunate person that's actually going, Lucky. life is really good. Yeah. I'm really Damn. glad that I'm owning my thing. I've got my green flag in the sand. I'm known for what I'm known for. Yeah. I'm getting business, I'm getting customers. And you know, life like, is good. You might have actually got that VA in place and had the start of your yeah. team developing, right? Yeah. However, this is the stage where, in my opinion, it's the hardest stage for you to develop. Yeah. This is the stage when you're at good and you've got to refine everything to get to great. Now, this is like if you're a bodybuilder, this is like losing that last 5% of body fat, which is the hardest thing to shift, yeah. right? You can shift all the others, but that last 5%, don't ask me how I know that about bodybuilders. Yeah, it's okay. anyway. I, I, I know that too, <laughs> would you believe it? I, I, but you, you, you put me into the frustrated camp by saying it because I'm nowhere near that last 20%. But anyway. So, so this is the hard thing. And so what we normally find with clients that are in the happy stage is, mm. as I said, they prove to themselves that what they're doing as a speaker, author, or coach is working. It's where Daisy's at. Daisy's uninspired, bored, <laughs> unmotivated, wants to garden all day, not bothered about work. Okay, yeah. so that's more about you not being challenged. Exactly. Okay? So this is where actually you're probably content and things are working quite well. We know that you get great clients, Daisy, and you're doing speaking gigs. And, and great results. Things. But maybe life is a bit monotonous for you. Yeah. Maybe life isn't challenging you. Maybe new clients are just saying the same thing. And that's what we said at the retreat is mm -hmm. that most of the things where we get asked the same questions again and again, we create trainings for that are digital. Yeah. The stuff that we want to work with with our ideal clients is when we're sitting down one to one with you or in a group of like six to eight people yeah. working bespokely on their problems, on their business. Mm -hmm. So everything's new. Yeah, everything's it's exciting. A challenge. For everything's us. exciting, right? So then think about, Daisy, how maybe you can shift your style up so that you're being challenged more. And then what Helena said in the frustrated point is digitalize so your capacity grows to do the stuff which is actually quite basic knowledge. Yeah. But let me go back to the happy. Yeah, do. Um, listen, loving listening to your success path, you're rocking, I bless you. Yeah. Um, so what we're saying here in the people that are moving from good to great, you are doing a great job. Well, yeah. first of all, Big pat on the back, right? Because this is really hard yeah. to get to the happy stage. You're probably in the top 20, 30% of the people that actually Agreed. get to this where they're going, it's working, Whew. I've proved it. I'm earning I'm earning money, I'm, I'm not just surviving. Yeah. I'm not massively like, you know, never have to work again. But I'm in the situation where yeah. my lifestyle's good, my health's good, my mindset's good. I'm waking up smiling, yeah. I'm waking up excited about my day. I might even be a little bit surprised, <laughs> like, but the Ooh. fact that you've got more choice, I would say, at this yeah. level, of choice of when to take holidays, choice of what clients to take on board, because you've built a really nice foundation around you. The foundation is so key. Yeah. The bit that you need now is to refine. Yes. Okay? So this is the bit where you start tweaking and honing all of the things. So you've got five areas of your business, your sales, your marketing, your people, your operations, and your... Sales, marketing, people, operations. Finances. Finances, of course I'm missing finances. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Bit that I hate the most. So, so therefore, they're the areas that you work on. Now, in order to have a, an operating business, normally your marketing and your operations is probably quite key because that brings in the clients and this delivers the work. Yeah. These three areas of actually your sales, your finance, and the people and the team around you might not still be 100% when you're at the happy stage, yeah. right? So these are the things we need to start going, well, let's refine. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna hate me for this, people that are at the happy stage, <laughs> because the bit that you need to work on in order to get to great yes. is by measuring stuff. Oh, it's by tracking stuff, right? If you know that a certain marketing funnel is your best funnel, 
then you need to know that by looking at the conversion ratios compared to all the others. So then you know that if I put £10 into that Facebook ad, I'm going to get £100 out. Well, I'm good to do that equation yeah, every day. because it pays for itself. But you need to measure that this funnel over here is costing you £10 every and time And before you, you get it. into the freaky, frustrated stage, remember you're at the point where the business can probably afford for someone to present you with the measurements. They can do the measuring. You do the actual looking at those figures and going, what am I willing to put up with? What do I need to tweak or change? Yeah. So this You're is a, the decision maker, remember, you have choice. This is about streamlining your business, getting insights from professionals, but most importantly, and this is why most of the people that come mm. onto our retreat do this, and people that come to the Connect and Create Days, yeah. is, is giving yourself the ability to take time out yes. to work on the business. Because until you do that, you can't keep on leveling up. You don't have the time to review and assess and see what's working. You don't know what to, what to measure. Most people go, love this bit mm. and they go, okay, so tell me what I should be measuring. Yeah. Don't worry, that's coming. Mm. But if you're at that stage, they go, what should I be measuring? Yeah. But then you need to put the time aside to review it, yeah. analyze it, make changes, yep. okay? And then start working with people and the expertise to level up. Completely agree. So that's what we're talking about here. Is it's, it's about honing your business. A lot of people are very happy to stay happy in their business all the time. Yeah. And there is no judgment with that at all. It's great. Right? It's that, what you wanted for you. Yeah. You're already in the top 30 odd part percentile of, of coaches, speakers and authors out there. So that's great. We're telling you, if you want to get to the level that we class yeah. as thought leaders and change agents, yeah. The ones that are literally storming it, yeah. you can't do that until you have this insight, this knowledge, this control over your business, which is coming down from streamlining and measuring it. And so this is where you, you operate almost at a different level with the you and your business. At this point, the way in which you serve your business, at, at struggling and frustrated, you're probably kind of serving your business and sometimes over serving your business in some way at happy you start to serve your business but you do different things so you start to actually take a back seat you start to create things that you go how can i create longevity how can i actually put things in place that i understand how the business is doing and the business says thank you very much by actually providing you with the financials, the team that actually yeah. it requires. Because at the frustrated stage, you might have been doing all of the video editing yourself, all Ugh. the meme creation yourself, all the diary management yourself, all your speaker, you know, you've been doing all that on Canva Many and Camtasia, hats. right? Because you had to, because we've got to like yeah. address the elephant in the room here. You might not have had the budget to do it. That's right, But and you that's also fine. might not have known what to tell the outsourcer to do because you didn't know what to tell them. Exactly. So you've had that time where you've been getting your hands dirty and you've been learning it and you've been doing it. Yeah. At the happy stage, it's the time to release the stuff which isn't your expertise. Yeah. That you should be, if you're looking at your hourly rate and you're paying a VA or what, at 30 pounds an hour and actually your hourly rate is 250 pounds. Woohoo! Let's work that ratio out, go and get another client and you've got your VA paid for the month, That's right? It. So it's about changing those mindsets up. So you're freeing the time. Because yep. if you're really a thought leader or a change agent, you do what you're meant to do on this planet 80% yep. of the friggin' time. Yes. Ask yourself right now, how much of your time are you that? spending doing what you're meant to be doing and what you love yep. and the stuff that you should be doing or you ought to, otherwise the business won't survive. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's a good barometer. So there's a, so that was, so we've gone struggling, frustrated, happy there's a thin line and so you dip in and out of this next one which is proud right so so that's the bit where when you are working on your business as you work on your business you step back and you go holy moly look what i did <laughs> look what i created i created this fantastic playground in which i get to play change hearts and mind make a difference make my impact Hang influence out with the, the work yeah come, oh my god so much of the time and, and actually make the income that I want and simply be able to actually stand back and go, yes, the world is changing as a result of what I want. Now, we work specifically with speakers, authors and coaches. So, so could this be relevant for many other business types? Yes, it could. Absolutely, this emotional context, but the definitions of what Words. proud kind of are 
may not be the same for us because most of the time right your book yeah is like your baby it's like, right woo-hoo. so therefore it feels like you, you want to show it off to yeah, everybody completely. Right? it's like you're feeling really pleased you're really glad about things you're kind of <laughs> here comes my word it's a delicious experience you're delighted there's joy in your world simply because you know that you've gone through all of those stages and you are feeling proud now here's the thing you know <laughs> this is always a test it's you know you don't mind handing out a business card if you've got those and sending them off to your website because you're proud that it you haven't reflects. got website shame i know no <laughs> website shame we don't want to do any of that it's actually simply that for you now you're in the point where you where you have some real choices and some of those choices are actually about how you create the legacy how you put things in place that allow you to either because some of this is down to the choice that either allow you to scale up in a way that you never thought was possible. I remember reading Mel Robbins's um, Three Second Rule and her actually mm. getting to the point where she was like, I was just talking about a decision-making thing. I didn't realize that my book would actually create me a company where consultants are now actually doing what they're doing. But it allows you the ability to scale that you may never have thought about when you when you were at the struggling stage. You just wanted a message to go out there and suddenly you have the... the, the impact and you're on the world stage enough for you to actually go and change the world completely because the foundations are so and that's strong it. that's it right you're you can take on any challenge because you've done the work and that's why you know us as speaker insight we believe that we fit, fill the gap because most other speaker author trainer coaches gurus whatever you want to talk about yeah. they talk about tactics yeah do this do this do this but you haven't got the solid foundation to build those tactics on. So therefore, as soon as a good opportunity comes in, your capacity crashes, your energy crashes, your products crash. You haven't got the ability to fulfill what's coming in. That's it. And that's when you're proud of a business, you know, I'm strong. I can take on whatever comes. Nothing nothing will happen. It's really quite funny. I I went to Lanzarote, she's off to Gran Canaria. Um, We're both going to volcanic islands that have grown (laughs) out of nothing. I've just realized this as I'm sat here. Please let them not be active. (laughs) They won't won't be active. But the point is that actually we build on the foundations of what, what, you know, there wasn't anything there. You build the foundation strongly and that allows you to have that proud feeling. Now, here's the great thing about that. You can either choose the route of, I set this business up to really take care of me, my family, and just actually provide for me and support a group of people, whatever that is, whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Now, and, and here's the thing. Having a business that is leveraged and that you feel proud of might actually mean, and Kelly says this all the time, might actually mean that you can start doing something different so your business is running along beautifully you're taking time out you're making sure it's on track you're doing all the stuff that you would do at happy but you're freeing yourself up enough that you can actually do this might actually be the fire in your belly your business might be the fire in your belly the thing that you really are here to do but it might also free you up enough to feed your soul with something entirely different right yeah 100 so you know we a lot of you probably know that we only work speaker insight one day a week, which yeah. is a Tuesday. And we have a, a Thursday once a month where we do our evaluations. Yeah. So you've got to think, we've got other businesses that we run and other things that we do, but we set this up so that it allows us not only to run other businesses which are our passions, but a lot of you know, like I'm an animal healer, so I go out to Borneo, work with the orangutans, and my business allows me to take that month off to go and do that, that's right? exactly it. Because that's the thing, working with animals feeds my soul. So you've got to think, what is the, going right back to the struggling, Mm -hmm. is connecting to the why of your business. What is this going to give you that gives the emotional commitment to go through the highs and the lows of the bad days? That makes sure that you are doing this for you and not because it's expected of you or somebody else's dream for you, right? But when you're proud, oh this my ends. word! You know it's just amazing. And so for some of you, certainly there were a couple of people at the retreat who really want to start charitable things, or who are already doing that. And so the business starts to serve not just you, but actually starts to serve the wider world by actually having another piece that it's the foundation for other things to start happening in the world. And all of those mini things, volcanoes. mini volcanoes. <laughs> Trust me, Lanzarote, about, depending on which books you read, it's either 150 or 303 volcanoes on the island, which is really quite amazing. So anyway, there you go, tour guide bit for you. (laughs) But our whole point here is that 
we want you to put the foundations into your business and one of the best ways that you can do that is to notice what the most common feeling is the group of words that you would use for the stages of your business because there are different things that you need to do that allow you to put those foundations in that then allow you to have the kind of business we, we all want you to get to proud obviously we want you to have as much choice as possible and be the change maker that you are so you are that lighthouse shining the light out in the world and you need to understand how your emotions are helping you to know what to do next so we obviously have a little tool for you don't we? Yeah, so I'm just about to, I've put in the link here, we have a uh, expert indicator test where you just take a series of questions, doesn't take very long at all, just literally um, tick box what, the one that resonates with you the most. Yeah. And at the end of that quiz is going to give you the main dominant emotion that you're feeling at the moment in your business. And? Right? And it, we're going to give you a whole, depending on what you come out with, we give you some resources and some training specific to that stage yeah. to help you move from here to here. So if you're at the happy stage and you're going, right, you're telling me about measuring, I don't know what to measure. <laughs> Guess what our resource is, right? How, what to measure, what to know, what isn't, isn't working in your business. Yeah. So all those types of things, we're gonna give you to handhold you on the journey because we want you to progress. We really do. So the great thing is, is that the test is like, you know, great to do, you get some insight about yourself. Some of the questions might make you think, Oh, okay, so if I want to move from struggling to happy, I need to get this in place. Okay, that's a good note to self. Yeah. But don't worry, we're going to handhold you through the whole journey. That's it. So my put the link in the comments here. Have a look at speaker insight forward slash expert indicator. Yeah. Take the test, do the work. We'd love for you to come back onto this live or back in the Connection Hub and just tell us yeah. what stage you're at. Are you happy? Are you, str are you struggling? Are you proud? And also just the aha that you get with that. That is a, oh, I hadn't realised that. A bit like Daisy did through this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. She thought that like... Feeling Mer was, Mer was a bad kind of thing. Bad, but actually She's it's a really great thing and it allows you the choices, Daisy, to do what you want to do. So we really want to hear from you. Where are you at and what did you realise and what are you going to put in place? Because that's what we're here to help you do. Take some action. Which is really good. So on that note, should we say goodbye? Yes. Please. See you until next week. See you Bye. next Tuesday. <laughs> oh, I have to. Oh, Leah's just come on. You just missed us, Leah. Oh, you have to watch the replay. Re hashtag darling. replay. <laughs>